Hi, my name's Kim. I'm a licensed and nationally certified East Asian medical provider and a Taoist practitioner. My focus is on holistic wellness and health. And one of the things that has had me concerned over the last few years is it seems like something has changed in our immune system. Something from this pandemic has changed how our immune system responds to infection. And just over the last month, what I've seen in clinic has been a little bit disturbing. I've had clients who get a mild COVID infection and they can't seem to shake it. It just keeps on coming back or just out of the blue, they just get hit by something and they are flat on their back and they cannot get out of bed for like three weeks. There's a lot of science coming out over the last couple of years, and I'm going to focus on an aspect of the immune system that science is suggesting may have been modified by these mRNA vaccines, and it might be a plausible explanation for why it seems like our immune system is weaker. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about that IgG4. So what is IgG4 and what does it do in your body? We have a couple different types of immune responses and one response is through the blood, right? And the blood goes everywhere. That's going to be our B cells. And then we have T cells, which go into the cells. Well, if we look at the B cells, one of the responses of B cells is called immunoglobin. So that is your Ig um, antibodies. And you have the IgG antibodies. You have like IgA, IgM. There's five different types of antibodies. Each of these have a subclass. The IgG has always been a focus with this COVID infection because in the original COVID infections, they saw that the IgG levels increased. One of the things that they didn't do when they were testing the vaccines and they started doing after the vaccines were released into the public was looking at the IgG levels, which increased with a COVID infection. They increased with a vaccination, but they went and they looked at the subclasses of the IgG levels. So each one of these different immune globins has multiple subclasses underneath it. And what they found that was a little bit unusual for the IgG uh, immunoglobins is that the subclasses, there seemed to be some sort of subclass switching and the body started making more IgG4 in sub individuals. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because IgG4 is usually the immune response when the immune system is facing a chronic infection and it's trying to dampen down the immune response. So it's a way of mitigating or silencing the immune response. And that might not be a good thing when you have an active infection that you're trying to push out of your body. Instead of focusing on just one research report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pull in all the research. Well, I'm going to pull in seven different pieces of research so that you kind of get an idea of why science is saying that this might be a problem and we should study it more. Okay. And hopefully by looking at the whole layout, you can see how this might relate to, to you and to why it might be an issue. The first one that I'm going to go over is the initial research study that came out that first identified that there might be a problem with the IgG immunoglobin. So there might be a problem happening in the response. And we're going to jump to just one page. I'll put links below so you can go through and look at all the research on this. But I'm just going to go to the one most important page. And that's this page. It's a graph. And what it does is it shows by vaccine status, the IgG response 
by the IgG subtypes. And you can see here, if we look at this graph, here, this section here shows how many vaccines the person has, has received. One, two, three, you can see three is red. And then this is the columns that we're interested in because this is the IgG response. And the more IgG4 response there is, the darker these columns get. One of the things that starts to show up is that the third vaccine that people get, well, that seems to be a problem for the IgG4 levels. That seems to be pretty consistently pushing a much stronger IgG4 response. So the problem with that is IgG4 quiets down the immune system. It slows its response to, the, to an invader. And they talk about this thing, they call it class switching. So there's IgG1 through IgG4. And there's other, I think IgG2 is, it stops cancer from entering the cells. And it seems like there's a switch between IgG2 to IgG4. There's more IgG4 being created. And that's something that they don't go over a lot. Our bodies only have the ability to make so many things. They have limited resources. So if they start using the resources to make something that you don't need or something that's not helping you, that takes away from resources that it needs to make things that can help you. And I talk about this more in Health Hub, and I talk about some of the immunity issues that were coming up because of these strong immune responses that they were pushing, that the vaccines were pushing, and how that might, it could technically unbalance the homeostasis in our body. Who knows? They really need to do more research on this, right? And to help us identify some of the strange things that are happening. Okay, I want to talk about the second uh, report, the second research report, and some of the insights that gave us. This study was really interesting because it started to identify who was having this strong IgG4 response. You know what they found is that if you didn't get a real COVID infection before you got the mRNA boosters or the, the mRNA shots, you were the one who was going to be more susceptible to having the sudden IgG4 strong immune response. So again, they checked out a number of different ways that people were infected or vaccinated, and they found that fairly consistently if a person did not have a COVID infection, that they received the mRNA vaccines, they had the highest propensity to have this really strong IgG4 response. Now, I want to jump to this next research study because this talks to these IgG4 levels and that they're a key indicator for the a bad outcome in COVID infections. So if you have a high IgG4 level, your, your uh, opportunity to have a fatal COVID infection is greater. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about this too, because if you have a higher IgG4 level, if your immunoglobins are imbalanced to too much IgG4, then these other IgG immunoglobins that can protect you from really serious diseases like cancers, they're, well, they're, they're finding a couple things with that. They're finding that um, there's less of them. And they're also finding when we start talking about immune imprinting. So let me talk about this report on immune imprinting because what they were finding is that People that were initially vaccinated with the mRNA vaccines, 
that they had a tendency to treat everything like it was that first Wuhan variant. So everything was an apple to people that were vaccinated with the mRNA vaccines. And they've done more research on this, what they call immune imprinting, that it, it locks on what it was first introduced to. Your body locks on what, what it was first introduced to. And one of the things that they found is not only do some people get this stronger IgG4 response, but those individuals that get the stronger IgG4 response, they're also seeing a change in the structure of the other antibodies in that sub in, subclass. So IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, IgG4, they're seeing a change in the structure of the antibody. And that change makes it more difficult for the rest of our immune system to identify this antibody when it's attached to an infection. And if it can't identify the antibody, other parts of our immune system can't attach to it and remove it from the body. So there are some problems with this increasing IgG4 response. If we look at the information that the CDC presented in June 2023 of this year, at the meeting where they were talking about, should we do a new booster? What should that booster be? I've talked about this information a couple times, but in this, they talk about the vaccine effectiveness and what they found is that the vaccine loses in effectiveness quickly. So the vaccine, the bivalent booster, which had two different spike proteins, that was delivered in October 2022. They found that within a couple months, that vaccine started losing effectiveness. And by month four, five, that not only had it lost effectiveness, that people with these boosters appear to be getting more infections. Now, the other thing that was kind of a problem is not to the same extent, but they were also seeing that in the people who only got the first two boosters. So the CDC definitely has seen something changing with our immune system and how it responds to each of these new variants as they come in. In Health Hub, I've been kind of tracking here in my area, hospitalizations by vaccine status. The information is almost impossible to get because the CDC's not openly publishing it anymore. The last thing that I saw was excess deaths. Now, if you go out to the CDC right now, the data they have stops at 2021. I really need to see data from 2023. And the insurance industry is reporting on excess mortalities for 2023. At least in their articles, they are. And one of the things that comes up is that our excess deaths, are tracking at the same level as 2022. What's concerning about that is that we're not in the pandemic, right? We're not seeing the deaths from COVID. So if COVID's not causing these deaths, then what is? Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about because now there's enough science that they're saying, yeah, there seems to be a change in our immune system on how the immunoglobins are working. So on the IgG4s, and that's part of our B cell immunity. So it's part of that immune system that's in our blood and that goes everywhere. There seems to be some changes there. And that IgG4 seems to be increased in some individuals those individuals are usually individuals who were vaccinated before they got a real COVID infection. And we're wondering, you know, is this causing some of these strange diseases? Because we know that IgG4 is associated with a lot of autoimmune issues, but is it also associated with cancer issues? Because 
if our immune system shifts to IgG4, well, then we only have so many resources. And that means the resources that would have been used to create immune system responses to cancer cells would be less. And that's kind of what they're thinking. They really need to do more science to prove that. Okay, so now there's one last thing that has me really concerned because if there is this, you know, unbalanced immune response, well, then what does that mean to us in the long term? One of the things that has had me a little bit concerned is if someone's immune system is suppressed, which is kind of what IgG4 does, right? Then even they're thinking that even a minor COVID infection could cause a lot of problems. Now, the next part about this has is a part that I've been wondering about because if this vaccine is unbalancing our immune response and if it's suppressing our immune system, then if we get these minor infections, what I'm seeing in clinic is we still can use holistic methods, but I'm also seeing that people are being forced into using those monoclonal antibody treatments for mild infections because they progress and they become so severe. And I wonder about that. The, the science, it's there saying that there is a potential issue here. It would be nice if the FDA took a leadership role in this because what's one of the goals of the FDA to protect public health, right? So who knows? Definitely more and more scientists are saying that this could be a really big problem having a suppressed immune system could be a really big problem. So let's hope that we start seeing some research that really uh, focuses and targets on this and that we really identify how this is impacting us. If it's these vaccines and if it is these vaccines, then where do we go from here? Okay. Until next time, I will catch you on the other side.